Hey everyone, so welcome to the 14th lecture on the course Ordinary Differential Equation. So today we are going to talk about Euler Cauchy equations. So if you look over here, the first one, this is called as an Euler Cauchy equation of order 2. This is called as Euler Cauchy equation of order 3. This is called as Euler Cauchy equation of order 4. And you keep on going order 5, order 6 and so on till nth order. Okay, now if you refer to some other books, what, what some people do is they keep here also, they call ax square plus bxy prime plus cy that is also okay but then i avoid writing in that way i usually keep the coefficient of y double dash as x square and here i will keep ax and here i will keep by so you have less number of constants less number of constants so it's easy to solve even if you take a x square y double prime plus bxy prime plus cy equal to zero that is also okay there will be a change in auxiliary equation but that's okay there won't be a difference in the answer but I will be always be taking the coefficient of highest order as x square, x cube, x raised to 4 and so on. If you have some number over here, you divide by that number. So that's the simple thing one can always do. Okay, so now let's concentrate on second order and let's see how the general solution looks like. Now here, since the coefficients are not constants, so you cannot use our previous method y equal to e raised to lambda x. Okay, so if you try by that way, that won't help you out. So question is, how we will start over here? So see ultimately you want to write down the general solution and I know that for second order the general solution is of the form c1 y1 plus c2 y2 where y1 and y2 are linearly independent solutions. So my job is to find two linearly independent solutions. The same thing which we did for our second order linear homogeneous differential equation with constant coefficients. So the same thing we have to do here as well. We need to find two linearly independent solutions. Okay now what do you do over here is you let y of x equal to x raised to m be the solution of this differential equation. Now why x raised to m because when you take the first and the second derivative you have x raised to m minus 1 and here x raised to m minus 2 and when you plug in these values over here here you have x square here you have minus 2 so that will go away here you have x here you have x raised to minus 1 so this variable will go away so that's why this is a good choice for picking as a solution. So when I substitute this values over here, what do I get is you take out x raised to m common outside and I get this product equal to 0. Now since the product is 0, one of them has to be 0. But this is non-zero because my x is non-zero. Or if x is 0, then this becomes 0, this becomes 0. I only get y equal to 0. So if x is 0, I don't have a differential equation. So my x is non-zero. So since x is non-zero, it's any power is non-zero. So this term is non-zero. Therefore, this term has to be 0. So what do you get is m square plus a minus 1 into m plus b equal to 0 and this is called as an auxiliary equation for Euler Cauchy differential equation. So this is my required auxiliary equation. Suppose if you had a over here a x square y double prime plus b x y prime plus c y in that case you will have a m square plus b minus a into m plus c equal to 0. So here also you will have three constants. So like more the constants the more things you will need to keep in mind. So just for the simplicity, I keep here one. Okay, so this is what the auxiliary equation I have. Now since it's a quadratic equation, I will have two roots, say m1 and m2. And therefore I have two solutions, x raised to m1 and x raised to m2. So therefore x raised to m is a solution if and only if your m is the root of this auxiliary equation. And suppose m1 and m2 are the root, so I get two solutions. Now if they are linearly independent, our job is done. If they are not, then we will see what to do. Okay, now let's go case by case. It's the same thing as we did previously for constant coefficients. Your m1 and m2 can be real and distinct. They can be real and repeated or they can be complex. So let's go one by one. So now suppose m1 and m2 are distinct and real. That means what? My y1 and y2 are, which is x raised to m1 and x raised to m2 are the solutions of the second order Euler Cauchy differential equation. Now question is are they independent? Yes they are independent. Why so? Because if you take y1 upon y2 what you get is you get x raised to m1 minus m2. Now since they are distinct that means this quantity is non-zero. So what is the ratio? Ratio is a multiple of x. That means what? Your y1 is not some constant multiple of y2. So since the ratio is non-constant therefore y1 and y2 are linearly independent and therefore how the general solution will look like your y of x 
is a general solution then it is nothing but c1 x raised to m1 plus c2 x raised to m2 so this is how a general solution will look like if the roots are real and distinct now let me take an example so this will be more clear so suppose this is the differential equation you have x square y double prime minus 3x y prime plus 3y equal to 0 now where your a is minus 3 and your b is 3 so what was our auxiliary equation this was our auxiliary equation you put the value of a you put the value of b over here you get a quadratic equation you try to find the roots so if you try to factorize this you get m equal to 3 comma 1 m minus 3 into m minus 1 so these are the roots are they real yes are they distinct yes so therefore y1 of x equal to x cube and y2 of x equal to x raised to 1 so these two are linearly independent solutions to the given differential equation so therefore if your y is any solution then this has to be of the form c1 y1 plus c2 y2 so this is how your general solution looks like now let's go for the second case suppose m1 and m2 are real but they are same the roots are repeated that means what the discriminant of that auxiliary equation is zero so let me call the roots as m since they are repeating so this is my auxiliary equation and if i use the formula for quadratic equation this is what I have minus b plus minus square root of b square minus 4ac upon twice a. So if I use this formula, this is what I have. Now since the roots are real and repeated, that means what the discriminant part is 0. So this term is not here. Only this part will remain. So I have only one root. So what is the solution? One solution is x raised to m. So this is one solution I have. Now again, let's go back to reduction to first order. If you have a second order differential equation and you have one solution, you know how to find second linearly independent solution. So if you can recall what was our y2, our y2 was nothing but u times y1. And what was our u? It was nothing but 1 upon y1 square e raised to minus integration p of x dx into dx. Where what is y1? The one solution which is given to you. Here in this case, my y1 is this. What is p? It is the coefficient of y dash provided the coefficient of y double dash is 1. Okay, so keep that in mind. So in this case, if I substitute the values over here, what do we get? So this is the euler cauchy equation we have. So here, what is my p of x? Your p of x is nothing but a upon x. Because I have to make sure if I want to apply reduction to first order, my coefficient of y double dash has to be 1. So if I divide by x square, my p will be nothing but a upon x. So if I plug in the value of y1 and p over here, what my u will come out to be? So this implies your u is nothing but 1 upon y1 square. So 1 upon x raised to 1 minus a e raised to minus p of x dx. Now if you try to solve this, what you get is 1 upon x raised to 1 minus a e raised to minus a ln x. And here if I take minus a at the top, what is e raised to ln of x raised to minus a? This is nothing but these are inverses of each other. I have x raised to minus a. x raised to minus a, x raised to minus a goes away. I have only 1 upon x and integration of 1 upon x is log x. So my u is nothing but ln of x and therefore what is my y2? My y2 is nothing but ln of x into y1. So when you had constant coefficients and the roots were repeating, the solution was e raised to lambda x, x e raised to lambda x. Here it will be x raised to m then another root will be ln x into x raised to m so here you have ln of x there you had only x so that's the difference okay so let's take an example so suppose if you have x square y double prime minus 3xy prime plus 4y equal to 0 your a is minus 3 your b is 4 so m square plus a minus 1 into m plus b now this is nothing but if you solve this this is nothing but m minus 2 the whole square that means the roots are repeating 2 and 2 so what is your y1 of x your y1 of x is nothing but x square and what is your y2 of x it is nothing but ln of x into y1 which is nothing but x square so this is how your solutions linearly independent solutions for this differential equation will look like and therefore what will be your general solution your general solution will be nothing but so if I erase this part, so your y of x is nothing but c1 plus c2 ln x whole multiplied by x square. That means c1 x square plus c2 ln x x square. You can take out x square outside. So that's the difference. There you had x and here you have ln of x. Okay, now before going to complex case, uh, let me tell you what if you have a third order euler cauchy differential equation and the roots are repeating three times. Now suppose you have or euler cauchy differential equation and these are the roots of that auxiliary equation so how many roots are there 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 so you have a seventh order euler cauchy equation 
x raised to 7 into 7th derivative of y and so on okay and these are the roots now question is what will be your seven linearly independent solutions so here your y1 will be nothing but x square your y2 will be what x square into ln of x what will be your y3 x square what you did for constant coefficient it was e raised to lambda x x e raised to lambda x x square e raised to lambda x x cube e raised to lambda x right you are multiplying with the powers of x the same thing you keep on multiplying with the powers of ln of x so here it will be x square ln of x square and here y4 it is repeating four times so this is nothing but x square ln of x cube so these are the four things what will be your fifth solution y5 it is 4 so it will be simply x raised to 4 your y6 will be x raised to 0 which is nothing but 1 and your y7 will be what x raised to 0 ln x because 0 is repeating twice so this is nothing but ln of x so your solutions are x square x square ln x x square ln x square x square ln x cube x raised to 4 1 and ln x so these are your seven linearly independent solutions to this seventh order euler cauchy differential equation and therefore what will be the general solution it will be the linear combination of these seven functions so i hope the idea is clear now let's go for the last case which is nothing but the complex case okay now suppose m1 and m2 are complex numbers and they are the roots okay so now so let me call m1 as m so what will be your m2 it will be conjugate of m so as i told you earlier as well complex roots always occurs in pair so if m is a complex number which is the root of a polynomial with real coefficient then its conjugate will also form a root so if i call m1 as m then what will be my another root the conjugate of m m bar so suppose your m is s plus it then m bar will be what s minus it as they are distinct so therefore your y1 will be which is nothing but x raised to m and y2 will be nothing but x raised to m bar as you can take the ratio the ratio will be depending on m therefore they will be linearly independent and therefore your general solution y of x will be nothing but c1 x raised to s plus it plus c2 into x raised to s minus it so this is how your general solution looks like for the complex case but as we saw in our previous case for constant coefficients we try to avoid this iota the complex number right so what we did we there also for constant coefficients we used Euler equation which is nothing but e raised to i theta is equal to cos theta plus i sin theta so here also i'm going to use the same formula and i'm going to get rid of this iota and i will bring into picture cos theta and i sin theta and how will you do that so what you do is over here is you can take out x raised to s common outside so what do you have x raised to s into c1 x raised to it okay, now if you if you know the fact e raised to ln of x is nothing but x only right because your e and ln are inverses of each other so similarly what i can do is i can write x raised to it as nothing but e raised to ln of x raised to it because a and ln will cut i will get x raised to it so here x raised to it can be nothing but it is nothing but e raised to it ln of x so here it is nothing but e raised to it ln x plus c2 e raised to minus it ln x so this is the trick i am using over here as i can write e raised to ln x as x i am writing x raised to it as e raised to ln x raised to it and then you simply bring this it at the front by property of log so this is what i have over here now you use the formula e raised to i theta so here e raised to i theta theta is what t ln x and here what is my theta minus t ln x so if i use that formula over here what do i get is x raised to s into c1 what is e raised to i theta cos theta plus i sin theta plus c2 into what is this cos theta plus i sin theta but cos of minus theta is cos theta only and sin of minus theta is minus sin theta so this is what i have now from here also you can take out cos cos outside and you call c1 plus c2 as another constant say a and from here also you call you take out sign outside and you call ic1 minus ic2 as another constant as b so if i rewrite this again what do i get is x raised to s into a cos ln x t plus b sin ln x t so this is how you can get rid of the complex number iota and you have cosine and sine into the picture so it is x raised to real part of the root s was my real part a cos ln x into imaginary part plus b sin ln x into imaginary part so that's how you write down the solutions whenever you have the complex roots okay so there if you remember it, it was cos 
imaginary part into x plus b sin imaginary part into x here you have imaginary part into ln x imaginary part into ln x okay so that's the difference so keep these differences in mind let me take an example and then let me give you some homework problems for practice now suppose you have some second order euler cauchy equation you find the auxiliary equation you find the roots and suppose this comes out to be the root okay now s is what minus 3 and what is your t it is 4 so if you use the previous formula which was nothing but x raised to s so x raised to minus 3 into a cos ln of x into t that means what 4 ln x plus b sin ln x into t right means imaginary part into ln x so this is how your general solution will look like for the given differential equation whose roots are minus 3 plus minus 4i if you want to see what are those two linearly independent solutions you can take this as inside so your y1 is nothing but your y1 of x equal to x raised to minus 3 cos of 4 ln x and y2 is x raised to minus 3 sin 4 ln x so these are your two linearly independent solution for the given euler cauchy second order euler cauchy differential equation Okay, now one can ask the same thing. What if the roots are repeated? That means what if you have minus 3 plus minus 4i two times? Then you do the same thing. What you do is this is your y1, this is your y2. Your y3 will be what? This multiplied by ln x. So that means what? x raised to minus 3 cos 4 ln x multiplied by ln x. Your y4 will be this into sine into this into ln x. Right? So what we did for the constant coefficients? you simply multiply it by x so here you simply multiply it by ln x so this is y1 this is y2 this is y3 and this is y4 and then the general solution will be c1 y1 plus c2 y2 plus c3 y3 plus c4 y4 so that's how your general solution will look like for the complex roots which are repeated as well okay so i hope all these examples are clear so here are the four examples that you are supposed to solve so i am i have not given you the differential equations directly I have given you the more easier thing, right? I have given you the roots directly. So for first example, it's a it's some fifth order differential equation, either Cauchy, and these are the five roots. So for each of these cases, write down the general solutions and uh, post the answers in the comment section. And if you have any doubt, then also you can ask me in the comment section. So I hope the concept is clear. If yes, do not forget to like, share and subscribe. Thank you.